So the idea of buying another property in another country has always been something that I've always thought about. Me and my partner always ponder with the idea of maybe buying a holiday home or even buying a property for investment purposes through buying and selling or renting it out whilst we're not there. And then that got me thinking, how does a person who is a British citizen buy a property in a place where they have no residence? And I know I'm not the only one thinking this. So in this episode, we'll be looking at how a Brit can buy a property abroad. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Now this video is intended to be a practical guide on how a Brit can buy a property abroad. Now we do have to consider that there are many overseas laws in play here and with almost 200 countries in the world that would be extremely difficult for me to go through them all in one go and it would make for a very long video. But this does lead me to my very first point, research. Do as much research on the country that you intend to buy a property on. It is really important to understand the local laws when it comes to buying and selling a property and renting it out. You can never do too much research on this area and because each country is unique, you'll probably hear me mentioning that research is an important element throughout this entire process. The next point is how on earth do you actually find overseas properties? Well, there are websites such as Zoopla, Rightmove and On The Market, which are websites you're probably familiar with. But did you know they actually have an overseas section on their website where you can actually search for properties in other countries? Alternatively, there are some high street agents which also dabble in international properties, or you can even go to the country yourself and speak with local agents there. One really good website that I actually thought was quite useful was a website called aplaceinthesun.com. It is a platform where you can learn lots of things about a particular country when it comes to the property market. Now it is limited to only a certain of countries, but they are typically the more common ones that people tend to look for. I'll put a link in the description box down below if you are interested. Now, once you have found a property, and again, I hope you have done a lot of research on this and your offer has been accepted, you can either pay with it full in cash or most likely you will need to get a mortgage. So how do you get a mortgage? Sadly for most of us, getting a mortgage on a foreign property cannot be obtained through UK lenders. Now there are some cases where lenders may offer it to UK citizens. However, these are usually high net worth clients. So for the majority of us, um, it probably wouldn't be applicable. So this means you need to get what is referred to as an overseas mortgage. And you get this by getting the mortgage from an overseas lender. It might be helpful to find specialist mortgage brokers who are experts in overseas purchases they can also provide you with extra useful information such as giving you a list of the local estate agents within your country and lawyers as well. Now you most likely will need to hire out a translator to help you through the mortgage application process or even other aspects of the housing process. So do bear that in mind. Now when it comes to minimum deposits for mortgages, it does actually vary quite substantially between countries. Just as a basis for us here in the UK, the typical minimum deposit requirement is usually between 10 to 15 percent, although 5 percent is becoming more and more available thanks to a government led scheme. But if you are looking to buy in France, for example, the minimum deposit requirement for foreigners would be around the 15 percent mark. But then on the flip side, if you look at South Africa, the minimum requirement is actually 50 percent. Now I did try to find a comprehensive list of the typical minimum deposit requirements you can expect for each country. However, I wasn't actually able to find one, but here is what I did find and I'll list them right here for you now. Also note that because you are getting a mortgage from an overseas lender, you are not covered by UK regulations. So you are not covered by the FCA or financial ombudsman. So again, as part of your research, please do make sure that you are getting a mortgage from a reputable source. Also look out for country quirk. For example, in Vietnam, all land is owned collectively. That means neither locals or foreigners can actually buy land. As a foreigner, you can actually buy a property, but you will have to lease the land from the government. Another example is Thailand, where as a foreigner, you are not able to buy land. So therefore you are not able to buy a house. You are restricted to purchasing a flat. 
Now, the next step is to understand currencies and its impact on your foreign purchase. So when you are making an overseas purchase, you are most likely going to be paying in their local currency. So do account for exchange conversion fees or the exchange rate because it can really make your purchase more expensive or cheaper when the exchange rate fluctuates. Let's look at an example here. So let's say if I wanted to buy a property in the US for $200,000 outright, so that means I don't need a mortgage. If I was to purchase it in March 2018 when it was $1.42 to the pound, that means that that property would have cost me just under £141,000. If I bought the property in March 2020, however, when it was $1.18 to the pound, it would have cost me just under £174,000. That is a difference of 33 k Now, the same principle can affect your mortgage repayment, as the conversion rate that most lenders offer typically track the exchange rate, unless you are in some kind of fixed rate deal. So for example, if your monthly repayment were $600 per month in March 2018, that would have cost you £422, whereas your monthly repayment in March 2020 would have cost you £508. Now, the next thing to understand is taxes when you buy an overseas property. Now, there are scenarios where you may be eligible for taxation here in the UK. So for example, if you make a profit from the sale of a property, this can be subject to capital gains tax. And that is because the UK tax system takes into account your worldwide income and your worldwide gains. This also means that if you do obtain a rental income from that said property, then you will be subject to the same tax as if that property was situated here in the UK. And therefore it would be subject to income tax. Properties overseas are still counted as part of your estate and therefore will be subject to an inheritance tax in the event of your death. Now, depending on where you are buying, you may also be subject to foreign taxes as well. These can include purchase taxes, income taxes on rent, taxes on sale, etc, etc. Therefore, it is really important and it should be a part of your research to get expert advice on local taxes when it comes to buying and selling or even renting out your property. So you may have understood from my previous points that an individual who purchases a property overseas is at risk of being taxed twice on any income or gains that they make from that property. One being from the UK's tax system and the other one of course being that overseas jurisdiction. This is known as double taxation. Fortunately for us, the UK does have double taxation agreements with several countries. Now these agreements contain a set of rules that depict which country has the right to collect the tax over the other country. So that means an agreement may give the UK exclusive rights to claim on taxation so you don't have to worry about the overseas taxes and vice versa. If there isn't any double taxation agreement in place for the country that you're looking to purchase with, you may be able to claim tax relief on any foreign taxes that you've paid through the foreign tax credit. And I'll put a link in the description box down below for more information on that. Now, one last note on taxation, and that is unlike purchasing a property here in the UK, you are not subject to UK stamp duty tax when you buy a property abroad. Although you may be subject to a form of land tax in that said country. Please do note, however, that if you do buy that property abroad, and that is going to be your first ever purchase, that means here in the UK, you will no longer be classed as a first time buyer, and therefore you will lose your entitlement to the first time buyer stamp duty tax allowance if you do decide to purchase a property in the UK a little bit later on. Now, the next thing to consider is getting independent legal advice. Now, I have already mentioned that when you do purchase an overseas property, you are not covered by UK regulators like the FCA. And there have been so many horror stories of Brits being scammed out of their money from developers and estate agents when they try to purchase a property abroad. Therefore, it's extremely critical that you do hire an independent lawyer, and independent being the crucial word here, to help you through the entire housing buying process. As I hinted, they should be independent, therefore they should not be associated with anyone in the housing buying process 
and do be wary of referrals from local developers and local estate agents as these can typically end in very bad results. The lawyer needs to be English speaking and fluent in the local language of the country that you're intending to buy from and they should also have a good understanding of the property laws in that country too and how it affects non-residents. Moving on to the next point, just like you were buying a property here in the UK, there are other costs that you would need to consider aside from the purchasing price um, of the property. And I've already kind of mentioned a few as I've gone through this video, but the government do have a very good comprehensive list of things you should account for. Now I'm not gonna go through them all, but it says here that additional costs that you should consider include fees for a financial advisor to manage your tax affairs for both UK and overseas, a chartered surveyor, a quantity surveyor, mortgage fees, uh, international bank transfer fees, etc., etc. So do set some additional funds aside. Make sure you go through this list and maybe get a good estimation of how much each of these things typically cost you. And then once you have made that money, then you are in a comfortable position to actually purchase a property. Sticking with to the same government website, they actually do have a section for useful tips for you to look out for when you are purchasing a property abroad. Things that they include is research. I'm not sure if I've heard that before. Uh, and following local laws when buying and renting out a property. Always get a written confirmation of what has been agreed in any negotiations and always insist on paper. Check that the sellers or developers actually have the title deeds to the property or land and that they can actually transfer it to you, etc, etc. Again, I'll put a link to this site in the description box so you can have a full read through at your own leisure. And I'll also put a few useful websites that I found particularly helpful when trying to understand how to buy a property abroad. And I'll put all of those links down below as well. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Now, hopefully you understand how a Brit can go about buying a property abroad. Again, this video was purely just for a guidance. I am interested in purchasing a property in the future in an overseas country, um, but I've not yet done so. And yeah, I just wanted to share what I found uh, with you guys and hopefully you found it useful as well but yeah do let me know in the comment section down below if you do have any more questions and as always if you did find this video very useful i would appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders for the growth of this youtube channel and remember i release a video every single week so if you want to keep up to date with those hit the subscribe button as well see you later bye